Hello and welcome back my lovelies. So the plan for today is to have a little chat about re-wearing costumes and making them re-wearable. I was baffled a couple of months ago to see some cosplayers talking about how you shouldn't re-wear costumes and it's been bothering me since. However, I came to the conclusion that outside of a few bad eggs and people chasing the latest fandom, this at the core is a problem with people not knowing how to make their costumes re-wearable and I think there's something we all can learn from that. So strap yourselves in for a talky video, we're about to go over all the ways I could think of to keep your costumes going for years. Now I'm pretty extreme in this regard, I have one costume that I've worn at least twice a year since 2012 and it's rare for anything that I make to go out less than three or four times but there are plenty of reasons to rewear anything that you make. There's the obvious, it reduces the strain on the environment. Although historical costuming and cosplay is significantly less damaging than fast fashion is, it still has its cost. However, the more you wear it, the less costumes you make, the lesser that impact is. Then there's the personal reasons. Rewearing a costume is so less stressful than making a new one for every event. The pattern that I've fallen into is to make one for each event and rewear for the rest of the days. Naturally it's also financially advisable to rewear costumes, aside from the fact you're not paying for new materials. Since I've started to make less costumes, although I've been putting the same amount of money into that one costume, I can make it go much further and make a much more elaborate, better costume that way. And last, but certainly not least, you should show off your hard work. You've put your blood, sweat and tears into this garment. You should wear it as much as possible and make sure that everyone knows how proud you are of it. So with all that in mind, I've come up with 10 tips and tricks and things that you should think about when you're making your costume in order to get the most out of them. So let's get on to the list. Tip one, know your fabric. The first tip I have for you is to keep track of all the fabrics that you're using. If it's available, and I know it isn't in all fabric stores, take a photo of the washing instructions for the fabric that you're buying. Know what you're working with and what it can take. Although I must admit this partly comes down to experience. Also be aware that if your fabric is dry clean only, some dry cleaners will not take it without a professional label. So even though you know that it's safe to dry clean, you might have difficulties finding someone who will dry clean it for you. Tip two, remember to pre-wash. Tip two is just good practice and it's good practice for many, many reasons, re-wearing being one of them. Pre-wash your fabric on the highest setting recommended. If that is hand washing, then hand wash it. If it's 60 wash, do it at a 60 wash. Do not make a costume, wash it, and then find out that it's shrunk or it's bled. Trust me, there is nothing worse. For those of you who are just starting out on your sewing journey, it's important to know that you shouldn't wash the cut pieces. Wash the full cut of fabric and then cut out your pattern pieces later because of the shrinkage and the damage from the washing machine, you're gonna end up, if you wash the cut pattern pieces, you're gonna end up with them not being exact, which may cause you problems in your sewing. And also, if you've got a fabric that tends to fray, you can zigzag or overlock the edges before you chuck it in, in order to stop it from fraying too much in the washing machine. Tip three, be smart when combining fabrics. My next tip is a tad less universal and heavily depends on what you're making. But if you can, be smart about what material you're using where in order to maximise the washability of a project. So, for example, if I was going to make a woolen dress with a fur collar, I would make that fur collar just loosely attached so that I could wear it, remove the collar and then wash the woolen part. And then once it's washed and dry and clean, reattach that collar. And that's because that wool I can put in a hand washer or on the hand wash setting on my machine, but the fur I could not. So by being able to separate the two, I can make sure I can wash the main part of the garment and the bit that I can't wash, I can do something else with. 
If you're not being historically accurate, you can take this even further. On this shirt, you can see where I've attached the leather bands using Velcro in order that I can remove them for washing. And on this coat, I have discs that are tacked on to allow me to cut them off for washing and sew them back on later. Remember that this also applies if you've got a very dark colour fabric with a very light coloured fabric. It might be worth separating those to make sure that they don't run when you have to wash them. I've done that here with the red bow on this white and pale blue sailor costume because I could see what was going to happen with that. This is more of a cosplay tip as it tends to use more alternative material but it does... Tip 4. Think historical. Lead me into the next tip. Think historical. Cuffs and collars were removable for centuries because they're the part of your garment that gets the grubbiest. Is it possible on your costume to do that and will it help you keep it clean? Especially if you're wearing heavy makeup for an event or a photo shoot, having a collar that you can remove and wash more frequently than the rest or even replace if necessary will help you keep it looking fresh. You can also protect the hem of a skirt in a very similar way by using a more hard wearing material on the inside. Tip 5. Sew to last. Another tip that's honestly just best practice is to think about your construction as you're going. Take time to finish your seams or line your costume if needed. If you know it's going to be chucked in the washing machine, then protect it from it. With Aziraphale's trunk hose, for example, I've taken the time to quilt the batting down so it doesn't misform in the washing machine, and I always finish my seams. I don't have an overlocker, so I just zigzag them, and that has never failed me in all the time that I've been sewing. Tip 6. Undergarments. So, all of these tips are well and good, but when you get to the event, what can you do to protect your precious garment? Make sure that you have the correct undergarments. And if you're going to be wearing that costume for more than one day, then you want multiple correct undergarments. This worked for centuries before people were able to just throw everything in the washing machine at the end of the day and can still work for us if we utilise it. Remember that a natural fibre breathes more easily so it won't make you sweat as much. But if you're a sweaty person in general, then invest in armpit pads. You can get these in most pharmacy, chemists, drugstore type places. You just pop them in under your armpit and it will soak up the sweat for you. Disgusting, but it works. The less sweat that you get on your costume, the less contact that it has with your body in general, the less you have to wash it, and that's good for any costume. Tip 7. Come prepared. It's not just the inside of your costume that you need to think about when wearing it either. Remember the outside, and if you drop something or accidentally stain it, then act fast. The faster you remove a stain, the less likely it is to cause permanent damage. I don't know how common they are around the world, but here in Germany we have these handy sachets with wipes designed for emergency spills on clothes. You can also get travel wash for washing your clothes in the sink on the go. So if you do need to do an emergency hotel room wash, you can. But do remember to test anything out on a scrap of fabric or on the inside where it can't be seen beforehand. You don't want anything that you're using to remove a stain to cause a stain. Tip 8. Get to know your washing machine. So hand washing is just a pain in the ass, but sometimes you can't avoid it when you're working with something delicate. There are ways to speed it up though. The majority of the time when I hand wash, I'll still chuck it in the machine afterwards, just on a slow spin dry in order to reduce the drying time, but also so that it doesn't drip water all over my house. But even more so, I've discovered that I can just use the hand wash cycle on the majority of my hand wash in order to reduce the amount of hand washing I have to do in the first place. Okay, so ignoring the fact that this is just German, this is just a spin cycle without any water involved. And I can reduce the spins down to a low spin, so I can do that after hand washing. I've also got the wool setting, which is essentially a hand wash setting, and I can adjust the temperature on that down to cold, so there's no heat in that. And again, I can also adjust the spins and then I've also got a fine one, which is kind of like the step above that. Obviously not every washing machine has the same settings, but it is something to look at your washing machine, see what it has and see what you can utilize. The other thing I would recommend is make sure that you clean everything immediately after the event before you put it away. Do not let it sit in a cupboard with all of your other costumes 
and make them smell bad too. You want to be able to go to that cupboard next time there's an event and just pull everything out and know that it's ready to go. Tip 9. When all else fails. When all else fails, there's the ever trusty Febreze to get smells out. But a better method is to get hold of some cheap vodka, put it in a spray bottle, and mist that over the problem area of your costume. I do say mist it, you're not trying to wash your costume, you're just trying to get rid of the smells. And when that vodka evaporates, it should take the nasties with it. But as with everything else, make sure you test it on a scrap beforehand. Tip 10. Keep them safe. And last but not least, storage. The last thing you want to do is to go to get a costume for an event and find that it smells oddly or it's full of moth holes. Make sure that they're not kept anywhere damp and if you're keeping them in plastic boxes, make sure that nothing smells oddly because the plastic will trap that smell in there and make everything else smell the same. Personally, I like to vacuum pack my less delicate costumes but this is not recommended for anything delicate. Do remember your accessories as well. If it's possible, store the accessories with the costume itself. That way it's less likely that you forget anything when you're going to get that costume next time. But if not, I recommend keeping a checklist with the main garment so that when you're packing it, you can go through that checklist and make sure that everything stays with it. My wife and I keep our costumes in cupboards in our room. So we know that they're in a safe environment and that the temperature is steady and that there is no dampness in there. And that's it. I'm sure there's plenty more tips and tricks out there. So if you have anything more to add in the comments, please do. My question for you this time is what costume have you worn the most frequently? Mine's not historical at all, but the costume that I mentioned earlier is this nurse outfit that I wear to at least one party every convention. It's had more wear than my suit has. Thank you to everyone who's watched all the way through to the end, and if you enjoyed it, please think about giving a like, and as usual, thank you so much to all of my lovely, wonderful subscribers. Please, please take care of yourselves, stay safe and stay sensible, and I shall see you all again in a couple of weeks. Bye!